Has Christianity always been one of the religions in the world to you? Oh, hallelujah. Christianity is not a religion. Neither is it a joining of a church and doing the Christian things like praying and giving and so on. Hallelujah. Christianity is the outworking of God's own kind of life received into the spirit of a man. Whoa. This divine life in the heart of a man makes him righteous. It keeps him healthy, divinely guarded in life, prosperous and victorious. It gives you the ability to enjoy intimate fellowship with the Father and have dominion on this earth. Hallelujah. This is what awaits you if you will wholeheartedly believe that Jesus is the Son of God raised from the dead and personally confess him as the Lord of your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Join Reverend Dr. David Binden on the Good Life Devotion brought to you by the Mega Light Mission, the church for this generation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful Friday morning to be connected to you on the Good Life Devotion. I believe you have had a very wonderful week. Your perspectives about fellowshipping with the church of God has really been restructured according to the word of God. And this is what a good devotion does. So thank you all who have shared your testimonies with us about what the message has done with your life this week. And if you are yet to share yours, just go to our website now and make sure we hear from you. And let others read your testimony and also be blessed. It is part of ministering to each other in the body of Christ. It has been a good week as we study the subject of fellowshipping together as the body of Christ in our local assemblies. Realize that you don't need to be a festive church attendee or a selective one or a fair weather one or a social one, a business one. You ought to be a meaningful church attendee. One that goes to church for the reason for which God gave us that instruction. One that has cultivated a habit. And you see, a habit is not cultivated by praying. A habit is cultivated by acting. So if you want to cultivate a habit of always being in church, then start being in church always. If you think it is challenging for you, just tell a brother, brother, from today, every Sunday, make sure you call me to go to church. Or every Friday, remind me to prepare for us to go to church. And come and pick me. Somebody will always come and pick you to church. And the moment you do that for one month, two months, it, it, become, it becomes part of you. If you're able to do something consistently for 21 days or 21 times, it becomes part of you. Sometimes seven times, depending on what it is, it becomes part of you. So you, someone can help you develop or cultivate the habit of always going to church. And when it dawns on you, you know, some of us, we just cannot stop. We can't say we are not going to church, not because we are pastors. It's that you can't just know that brethren are, are fellowshipping and you are somewhere doing nothing. You see, it is part of us. It has become our habit. And that's what the Bible likes. The Bible says it's good. It, it tells people that don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together like some are doing. Which means God is not happy with those who don't gather with other brethren. But I know that if you have followed us this week, and if you are watching me today for the first time, go to our YouTube channel and get the rest of the messages on this subject. You'll be, you'll be so blessed. If you are a church leader, download those messages and l let your group listen to them so that they'll be awakened to why they should be in church all the time. Hallelujah. Right, so from there we began to share with you certain important reasons, biblical reasons why we should always fellowship together in church. One is we fellowship to worship God. We fellowship so that we can fellowship with our, ourselves as the family of God. We come to church so that we can pray together because of the power of corporate prayer. And today we are looking at another important reason why you should go to church. And it is the fact that Go to church for instruction in righteousness is another important reason for church service. And that is why any church service you attend that there is no teaching of the truth of God's word is not complete. That's why every church service, at least as much as possible, should, should have a session where you worship, a session where you fellowship, a session where you pray, and a session where you are instructed in righteousness. Of course, there are meetings that are dedicated to things. We have meetings that are worship meetings. Even in those meetings, there should be a sharing of the word. But that is not the major portion. Then there are sessions where we fellowship. Even in those meetings, there should be an exhortation. But that's not the main thing. Then there are sessions where we share the word of God. 
But even in those meetings, there should still be worship and other things. Are you getting that? Right, so go to church for instructions in righteousness. Because that is an important reason why God wants us to always fellowship together. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Instruction in righteousness here is teaching according to the life of God. That's instruction in righteousness. Are you ready for today? Right, Father, we thank you for the, your word today. And your word is imparting us with life. But your word is an instruction in righteousness to us. And by the time we round up today, our lives have been lifted to another level. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Wow. So let's take our time today to go through what the Spirit of God led us to write in the Mass Peter. And Peter says that the church is the school of life. In fact, in Megalite, we have what is called the school of life session. That's our Bible study session of the church. So every Sunday you go to church, you have what is called the school of life session, where you are taught in certain basics of your life in Christ before the general service. All right. So the church is the school of life. And if you are a Christian, you should value this so much. You should begin to see the church as your school of life. Everyone has a school he attends. Everyone. There's no one who has never been to school. But the first school you are born into is the family. So what we call school today is the formal education system, the secular education. But real education starts at home. So the family is the first school. But the kind of schooling you receive in your family is dependent on the kind of family you are born into. And so that is not enough. For instance, if you are born into a poor family, you'll be schooled to become poor. If you are born into another worshiping family, you'll be schooled to become another worshiper. If you are born into any religious family, you'll be schooled like that. So that, that kind of family cultures you. And your, the family in which you are born, if that is the only education you have, you may be seriously disadvantaged. Because if the education is wrong, it means your whole upbringing will be wrong. But that is not any mistake of yours. You were born there. You didn't determine the family to be born in. So apart from that, there is the real education for life. And the church of God is the place for that. Before, we also have secular education, education to be a nurse, to be this and that, those kind of educations. Types of education. Right. So the madras is that the school, the church is the school of life. In other words, it is a place you learn to really live. If you are a Christian, the place you really learn to live is the church. Let this one soak. It must soak into your spirit. Right? The Masbera says that the church is the place where you are nurtured, where you are educated, and where you are trained up according to the course of God's life. Oh, how I pray you understand this. Living as God on this earth is something no man has ever learned. Only God can teach us to live as God because the moment you are begotten of God, you have become God. And you must now learn to live as God. So if you go back to humans, what are they going to teach you? They are going to teach you to live as humans. And that is what our earthly families did to us. When we were born, we were born as humans. So the family helped us to learn to live as humans. By the day we got born again, that role of the family ended. Because if you go back to the family, they're going to teach you how to live as a human. So from that day, you now need to be in church 
to be taught how to live as God. And that is why the body of Christ has a responsibility to create an environment to teach the born again person how to live as God. So the church is not a place for Christian politics or gimmicks. The church is a place to nurture God's sons and daughters to live as the gods that they are. Because if you are born again, you are actually one with Jesus. He is the, the vine, you are the branch. You have the same life with him. Therefore, you must live as him in this world. Because as he is, so are you in this world. So how will you learn to live like that? By allowing yourself to be nurtured, educated, and trained up in the church. This is one reason why we go to church. So next time you say, I'm going to church, make your mind up. I am going to be taught in the school of life. This is why we always emphasize, make sure you are in a Bible teaching church. The primary role of the church is to teach. Healings are good. Prophecies are good. Miracles are good. Counselings are good. But the primary role of the church is to teach. In Acts chapter 20, verse 32, when the apostle Paul's time was up to die, and he knew he was going, the words of a dying person are important, they say. Look at the two things he commanded the brethren to. Verse 32. It says, And now, brethren, I commend you, number one, to God, and to the word of his grace. He didn't say to miracles and deliverances and healings and prophecies. He said, and to the word of his grace, which are able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. And every shepherd that is feeding the flock of God with the word knows he's doing the right thing. Because when you see the brethren grow in the things of God to be able to live for themselves, you know you've done the right thing. And that is the purpose for shepherds. So good. If your gifting is the gift of prophecy, prophesy, but also teach the brethren to live. If your gift is to pastor, pastor, but also teach the brethren to live. If your gift is to perform miracles and all that, do the miracles, but also teach the brethren to, to, to live. That's why he said he gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, the maturing of the saints for the work of the ministry. So it doesn't matter which giftings you are standing in, you still have the baseline responsibility of equipping the church. And what builds the church up? I commend you to go into the word of the devil, which is able to build you up, to equip you. So when we say be in a Bible teaching church, we are not saying that with derogation to any other church or because somebody may say, okay, we have the teaching gift. It's not because we have the teaching gift. It is because that is what is required. You know. You are watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindon. Brought to you by the Megalites Mission. This devotion comes to you from the daily devotional called The Emancipator. The Emancipator is a devotional that brings you truth that will usher you into the good life experience. Call to subscribe to your monthly copies. You can also visit our website for free downloads of The Emancipator. Are you so burdened with sin consciousness that you are wondering whether you can fully please God? Is there a particular act of sin in your life that you seem not to be able to overcome? Do you seek to have a definite understanding of your righteousness in Christ and forever live as a master of a sin? Good news! Dr. David Bindon's best-selling book, Master of a Sin, is a must read. Call the following numbers now for your copies. 0264 327106 or 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, so let's go ahead. The man says that many Christians, are, many Christians subject themselves to be taught by mundane lecturers and professors in different fields of study. Many Christians. They do everything to ensure that they arrive on time at lectures and complete all assignments. But when it comes to the word of God, they think once they have a Bible and can read, they do not need instruction. This is one of the deceptions of darkness. I have come across quite a good number of people who have made such statements. But of course, it's because they don't know. So they think they're saying something so much. So if I, I can read my Bible, so why should I go and somebody will just be deceiving me or taking my money? If somebody makes such a, a, a statement, I can sit in the house and read my Bible. And yet, when he was going to school, his father bought him a textbook. Do you remember that? <laughs> I remember when we were in medical school. We had textbooks. They will give you the recommended list of textbooks. You have the books at home. You still go to school. Why? Why don't you sit in the house and say, oh, I have the textbooks. So from class one, I'll just buy the textbook for myself and I'll st just study and study. Is that what you do? And sometimes you have some textbooks, right? Right. There's a topic you read. You just, you read. It's all English, right? Or an, a, a language in which the textbook is written. You read it, you read it. But the moment you sit in the lecture hall, the lecturer just says a few things. Then everything that you read now begins to make sense. That is the power of the lecturer. It's the same thing. Or you read a chapter and you didn't really get it. But after the lecturer has taught, you came back again and took the same chapter. And now the thing looked like, oh, these things were here and I never saw them. Why? The power of a lecturer. It is the same thing. And the reason why you are understanding that course in that way is because you agree that I am going to school to be instructed. And it is important to have the same mentality in the body of Christ. That I am going to church even though I'm a professor in this course. Even though I can read English, I can read Greek and all that. I am going to church to be instructed by my shepherd. And when I come home, I come to take my Bible and I will understand it better. So read your Bible. Never compromise that. But go for instructions. The instructions are meant to prime you to be able to understand the scriptures well. And that is why every minister has the responsibility to be able to instruct your people to understand the word of God. So we go to church to be instructed in righteousness. In righteousness. Every other school, the master says, every other school or subject you study is only a subset of life. Remember, your life is so big. Mathematics is only part of it. Science is only part of it. Economics is part of it. Administration is part of it. Every aspect of or any course of study you take is only a small aspect of your life, a subset. The word of God, which is your very life, deserves your full attention. God's life is not talking about just an aspect. Don't that's good. So this is my spiritual life. This is my social life, my academic life, my marital life. They've compartmentalized their lives into compartments. <laughs> your life is only one. And the word of God is the school that teaches you how to put everything together as a person. So if you can give so much attention and care to a course you are studying in the university or senior house somewhere, and rather not pay attention to what you need to be able to use all this, you are making a mistake in life. That is why we have seen very intelligent academicians who are failures in life. That you have studied accounting doesn't mean that you'll be able to count well your money. That you have studied administration doesn't mean you can manage your life well. So you need a school of life to instruct you on how to make your life complete and holistic. And the church is that place. It's the pillar and the ground of truth. 
Let me show you what the word of God is to you. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. We'll read the 46 and the 47 verses. Deuteronomy 32, verse 46 and 47. It says that, And he said unto them, Set your hearts unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which ye shall command your children to observe to do. All the words of this law. Verse 47. For it is not vain, it is not a vain thing to you. In other words, the word of God that Moses was giving to the children of Israel, he's telling them that those words were not useless things. He says, for it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. So while, while the Israelites saw the word of God as burdens and commandments to obey, Moses saw the word of God as their life. Look at that. I'll take it again. For it is not a vain thing for you, because it is your life. And through this, ye shall prolong your days in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess. In fact, he actually taught them that it is through the word of God that they were going to make successes out of themselves. In Joshua 1.8, he said that this book of the Lord, these instructions of God shouldn't leave your mouth. But in them you should meditate day and night that you observe to do what is written therein. He says, then shall you make your way prosperous. Why? Your prosperity, the entire outcome of your life, is dependent on the word of God. So come to church with a notebook. Come to church with a pen. Or a device to write notes. Don't come to church empty-handed. Come to church with your own Bible to make references. You know, when we were in the university, one, one of our professors... <laughs> uh, came to the teachers and he said, he doesn't understand why Christians go to church with a notebook. And yet he was teaching us and was requiring us to be writing notes. He said, oh, they, since they were young, they've been hearing all these things and uh, they just, see, people are serious. He, he was making fun of the church. And I was in that class and I said, you don't know what you're talking about. You have been teaching this subject for years and you still ask people to write notes. A subject that some of us studied, and after some years, you don't even know. Some of the, we studied so many subjects, and you're not using any of them. And you wanted us to write notes in that. And then, what was about life? You didn't see why people should go to church with a notebook. That's a deception. So, go to church, prepare to receive the word. And people have this notion oh, it's Bible, so once we hear, that's okay. Why don't you go to school and so I, I, I won't forget and then just sit down from class, one to university and not write any notes? Because you know that you need to go back and revise. Apply the same seriousness to the word of God. Have your own Bible. There are Christians who don't even have a Bible. So the day the projector in church doesn't work, they are just sitting in, in darkness. And you are not going to go everywhere with a projector. There's no projector in your bedroom. Get your own copy of the Bible. Apart from what you have on your, on your device, have another hard copy of the Bible. Where well, you can also open and read and, and use your pen to underline some important words. It is important for you. The man's father are saying that this is one of the reasons why we go to church, to be instructed in the word of God. Go to church with your heart ready to be taught by the shepherd God has given you. Jeremiah 3.15 says that I'll give you shepherds after my heart who shall teach you, feed you with knowledge and understanding. Ephesians 4, 11 to 13 also says the same thing. Ministers who shall equip you to do the work of ministry. This will mature you to fully manifest the God being that you are. If you are a child of God, you are a begotten son of God. You are a fully God being. But it takes instruction in righteousness to manifest that God being. Always receive the word of God that comes to you. As for you, not for someone else. It doesn't matter whether you are an emeritus professor or a junior high student or school dropout. God's word is for your instruction. Receive it. You know that some people go to church and when the word is coming, they wish, ah, is that brother around? They are looking around for someone. The word is for you. It's not for that brother who is not around or around. 
They don't think the word is for them. The word is for you. Every word is for you. Something can improve in your life when you receive the word as for yourself. Wow. So it is important to go to church, to worship God, to pray, to fellowship with the brethren, and to receive instructions in righteousness. There's so much more in the Manspeta that we could have talked about by time. So make sure you get your copy on the Manspeta for this month and um, uh, ensure that you study what is there. For instance, tomorrow we're going to, there's more in the Manspeta. If you have your copy, you can read or download a free copy. Today is a Friday. In many areas of the world where the weekends are Friday and Saturday, I mean Saturday and Sunday, if you're watching me you're from one of those areas, where are you going to be this weekend? Make a decision today. Plan, set your alarm to be in church on Sunday. And if you're in the sister of cry, you don't know what to fellowship, I can invite you to the Megalite Mission. Just call the number displayed on the screen, whether you're around Kaswa area, La Paz area, Legon, uh, Ashaman, Tema, Nungwa, those areas, Adenta, Medina, or you're around Circle, Accra, Kolegono, those, just call and where you are, you will direct you to any of the branches that is near you. If we run, I'll say this after me as a prayer here. We have said, Dear Father, I am so blessed by this truth. Your word is for my instruction in righteousness. I highly esteem your word and submit myself to be taught in the school of life, which is the church. In the name of Jesus. We cannot run out without giving you the opportunity to receive Jesus. It is so simple to receive Jesus. You've heard about Jesus. And you heard that he came to die for the world. Now what is left is, believe that that his death and resurrection is what you need to be saved. In other words, that is what you need to believe to receive the life of God. That is the belief required of you. If this is what you believe, then make a confession of him as your Lord and be born again. By saying this after me. Say, so, dear Lord Jesus, I'm grateful you died for me. With all my heart, I believe that you were raised from the dead. Jesus, I confess you now as Lord over my life. I receive your life into my heart, and I declare that I'm born again. If you did this with all your heart, you are born again. What is left is you need to grow to begin to exhibit a divine person that you have become. And that happens by getting yourself planted in a Bible teaching church. Authentic, just call us and we'll help you to grow. Definitely, we are going to come your way again Monday next week with another important subject. But till then, keep basking in the glory of the good life because life is good. Thank you for watching the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bindan, brought to you by the Megalite Mission. To fellowship with any of our branches near you, call 055 792 7744. Follow Dr. David Bendan on Facebook by simply liking the Good Life Devotion page and the David Bendan Life page and receive daily nuggets to enable you exhibit God's divine life in you. Also, watch previous episodes of the Good Life Devotion on YouTube on the Dr. David Bendan channel and you will be blessed. Visit our website today and have access to life-transforming teachings and materials by Dr. David Bendan and Mrs. Cindy Bendan. Your life will never be the same. Don't miss the Good Life Devotion on the channels displayed on your screen at the scheduled times. Till we come your way with the next episode of the Good Life Devotion with Dr. David Bendan. Life is good. Enjoy.